Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Welcome to it. Thanks for being with us. 888-900-3393. Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Iowa caucus went about as we all expected. Exactly how you said it. Yeah, except for one uh, little hiccup there. Really? Uh, Ryan Binkley. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan Binkley. Yeah. Sneaked in ahead of Asa Hutchinson. Otherwise, the uh, uh, the turnout, I mean, it was just exactly uh, as I called it. Uh, Donald Trump well, obviously won the Iowa caucus. 51% to Ron DeSantis, who finished number two, 21%. Nikki Haley, 19%. Vivek, who is no longer with us. Well, at least in the campaign, seven point seven percent. Then Ryan Binkley. <laughs> How does, who is that? I, Who's Ryan no Binkley? Idea. He got seven hundred seventy-four votes for point seven percent. Asa Hutchinson got one hundred and ninety-one votes for point two. So he got seven times the votes. Six, yeah, seven times the almost. Votes Asa Hutchinson. Of Asa, yeah. And and I'm I'm sitting here and I'm. I'm I'm looking here on Ryan Binkley, and I found that uh, he had uh, a speech, you know, at the caucus that was interrupted by comedians. I mean, uh, how did they even know where he was, Ryan <laughs> Binkley? I don't know. Weird. Yeah, I wasn't aware of the. Weird. Uh, so that's a shame on me for not being aware of that candidacy. Thirty-five people still voted for Chris Christie, uh, <laughs> so he got 0.1 percent. Uh, huge victory for Donald Trump, and uh, I, you know. It looks like a foregone conclusion to me. Uh, yeah, I mean, DeSantis put all of his eggs in the Iowa basket. Yeah. I mean, this was... At least he beat he beat uh, Haley. Haley. If, yeah. if that's any kind of consolation to him, I, I, I don't know if it is. 30 points behind the winner. I, right. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Because he essentially pulled out of New Hampshire. So he's not going to do well in, in New Hampshire. He might be fifth in New Hampshire. Uh, and then... You know, then you got her home state of South Carolina. I don't know where this goes. Yeah, Super Tuesday seems like a very long way away. Yeah, it does. March 5th. Really does. You got to keep your donors interested in the meantime to get you to Super Tuesday. Right. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, uh, this was definitely uh, uh, a resounding win. For Donald Trump, forty-one uh, percent. Let's see, the top issue of caucus goers: immigration, uh, immigration, and then the economy, thirty-three percent. Yeah, that's what I recall. Yeah, it was about eight points ahead um, for the number one issue for Iowans, and they're not a border state, so that tells you that it's pretty serious. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you for noticing. It is uh, a good thing that people are understanding that we can't keep this going this way. It just can't happen. And, and look, and if this is the horse that, that uh, the typical GOP voter wants to ride to November, then go for it. I, I, it's it's going to be... On immigration? Uh, no, Donald Trump. Oh, okay. I'm saying that mm-hmm. it's going to be tougher to convince uh, independents to vote for him this time around. I'm of that opinion, as opposed to... Because you're now going to be talking... Like, Donald Trump is now the issue mm-hmm. when you're trying to convince people. Yep. And so who knows what's ahead with legal issues and so on and whatever. As opposed to the issues of the day, mm-hmm. you're going to be now trying to convince your friends and family to, to uh, you got to convince them of Trump. And um, you got to keep pointing to how things were like under him if you're going to make that case, uh, as opposed to how they are under Biden. I think that's going to be your strongest play. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is, can he escape... The 91 charges that he's been saddled with. Right. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, also, they, uh, I guess MS, MSNBC, I wasn't watching it. Uh, they right. cut away from the Trump speech. They, for, in fact, they didn't, did they not carry it? It's for our own good. Yeah, Pat. they didn't even carry it. This is insanity, man. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, so uh, they had great coverage last night. Here's Rachel Maddow on the Trump speech. Interject. Sorry. I'm sorry, I just have to do a little bit no. of business just for a second. Um, at this point in the evening, the projected winner of the Iowa caucuses um, has just started giving his victory speech. Uh, we will keep an eye on that as his it happens. Donald Trump. Uh, Say we his will name. let you know if there's any news made in that speech, if there's anything noteworthy, something substantive and important. Um, the reason I'm saying this is... <laughs> 
of course, there is a reason that we and other news organizations have generally stopped giving an unfiltered live platform to remarks by former President Trump. It is not out of spite. It is oh, not a decision oh, yes. that we relish. It is a decision sure. that we regularly revisit. Oh, um, oh, and honestly, oh. earnestly, it is not an easy decision. Uh -huh. But of there is a cost is. to us as a news organization of knowingly uh -huh. broadcasting untrue things. Oh, oh my god! Fundamental truth uh -huh. of our business oh, and who gosh. we are. And so his remarks tonight <laughs> will not. Who are you here live. We to will decide? Them, um, and let you know about oh, any news that he makes. Wow. Of course, to their audience, that's great. I'm sure that's fine. Yeah, that's, they don't care. Yeah, it They don't care. If nothing. you're watching MSNBC, you know who they are and what they do, and you're good with it. And so It has nothing they don't to care. do with broadcasting untrue things, because if that were the case, oh my that in March, gosh. when the State of the Union happens, I right. don't expect to see Joe Biden's face right. on MSNBC. That's for sure. Oh, these people are Are we waiting till March? Yeah. It's for the State of the Union? Yeah, it's... Uh, Why? I... I don't know because he's That's old, weird. and I don't because he's old. Maybe think he'll he be replaced by then. <laughs> State of the Union. Yeah, but you're right. It's very late this That's year. That's really late. Wow. Union. Let's see. I think it's March fourth. <clears throat> if I think March seventh. Uh, we had more from. Uh, we, uh, when was the last time we played Rachel Maddow? <laughs> I know. Years <laughs> ago. Last night was so just egregious. Gross. Yes. Yeah. You had to play these clips. And by the way. Same thing with CNN. Like they played just a few seconds of it, and then they bail and out. cut away. And then Jake Tapper says, "Iowa caucus schoolers decided to uh, believe in the big lie." He that oh man. My, oh my other, gosh! He utters that phrase, "the big lie." Wow! Every single what happened to Jake day. Tapper? He hates Donald Trump. Hates yeah, he him. does. He does. It's ruined him. He it's ruined yeah. his journalistic tendencies because he was a journalist at one point. Yeah. He's not now. That is not journalism. So, like, where Bill Maher has the 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 blind spot on religion, religion, right? Yeah. Jake mm -hmm. Tapper has it with Donald Trump. Yeah, they, they cannot I think that's right. report on those things legitimately. You know, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, here's Matt Allen. GOP fascism. Uh -huh. This is going to be fun. Uh -huh. The big fun. picture takeaway from that, and I don't mean to be, again, too dark, as you said, on this, but <laughs> it is not, if we are worried about the rise of authoritarianism yes. in this country, we are worried about potential rise of fascism in this country. Right. If we're worried we're about that. our democracy mm. falling to an authoritarian and potentially fascist form of government. <laughs> the leader who is trying to do that is part of that equation. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh. But people wanting Are that correct? is a much mm -hmm. bigger part mm -hmm. of that That's equation. Right. <laughs> and the American electorate is made up of two major parties. One of those parties has been flirting with extremism on the uh -huh. ultra yes. right Democrats. for a very long time. Democrats. They've brought them in in a way that they haven't been central to Republican electoral politics ever before. And I know because I've been studying this. But once you have radicalized one Unreal. major party so that those are the preferences <laughs> of the people who adhere to your party, Democrats are the leaders are interchangeable. Are you and yes, me? Trump is is sometimes what we call it. Mm -hmm. wow, MAGA is... movement is probably a better way to do it. But there is an authoritarian mm -hmm. movement inside yes. Republican politics that what isn't being bamboozled garbage. by Trump. Mm -hmm. They are pushing Trump <laughs> yeah. to get more and more right. extreme because mm. the more extreme things he says, the more they, the like more they adhere and to him. That... Yeah. And, and that is coming from the, a very large proportion of the American right that adheres to the wow. Republican Party. And that's why this is a Republican Party problem more than it is the problem mm -hmm. of one man and his leader. And we, Doesn't that and tie we together can't... the Jeez. Oh, my gosh. What garbage. Isn't that fun? Spilled out of her mouth. See what you've been missing over there? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, what was that? Uh, what's wow. That, what's that stat on uh, Trump's uh, uh, record? Uh, on the vote? election alert? Yeah. What is this? Uh, he set the Iowa GOP caucus non-incumbent record. So okay. for a non-president uh, with 56,260 votes, surpassing Ted Cruz's 2016 record mm. of 51,666. Very interesting. And you know what? And, and that's surprising because they had a low turnout. Uh, it was mm -hmm. like 115,000. Whereas uh, the record, I think, is 180. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So okay. that's, uh, that's a huge... That shows you that he won by a bigger percentage than anybody ever has and Trump, in Iowa. He won. He won big. That's all well and good. <clears throat> Can we not? Can we wait more than sixty seconds to call? Yeah, an wouldn't election? that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? People were still voting. NBC called it at like I was. I was looking at like five in the afternoon, and they <laughs> yeah. they called it. 
I, I mean, it hadn't even started yet. Yes, I love bro. when Pat tweeted about who you gonna, who you think is gonna win <laughs> the IR caucus. It was one minute seconds, later. One minute later, it's been called. I'm like, oh, jeez, that's just yeah. Sad. Say the word Iowa, Chris. Iowa. Oh, very good. Okay. What was he saying before? What was I saying before? Uh uh. <laughs> I uh caucus. <laughs> Check the tape. I love you. <laughs> I uh. He's hard on you. He, he is, is hard on you. It, it comes it. from it's a racist. place of love. I'm uh, no, just I know, trying I know. to help you, you assimilate you're, since you're, you're only a, want the best for You're him. a new American. <laughs> I'm merely trying to help you. Hey, by the way, I know I'm a new American. Why don't we all have caucuses? <laughs> right? Like, I feel like right? that would be such a... Because they're weird. That's are they why. weird? Yeah, I like they the Democrats weird. one better, though. They're weird. I like the Which Democrats, one is that? the way they do the Iowa caucus, where you get in the room... And you walk to the corner of the room to which candidate, and then you try to persuade people to move to a different Ooh, I candidate. I like that. That's much, uh, I, I mean, if you're going to do a caucus, that's how you do a caucus. The way the Republicans do it, you give a speech, you I vote. I just want to go stuff. to the booth and and vote. Then you want a primary. That's what I want to do. Then you yes. want a primary. That's what yeah. I want. That's what I get in Texas. So uh, anti-social there, Pat. You don't want to mingle with your <laughs> I fellow I really voters? Don't. No, I don't. Okay. I Share don't. the minds? So how are you doing so far? Uh, who are you going to vote for? Wait, no. So far. Hold on. No, but you left out the part. <laughs> Is it cold enough for you out there? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was definitely in play last night. Oh, so. you know. Everybody <laughs> heard that multiple times. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, Tuesday, wow, a week from today, we go to New Hampshire. Oh, uh, that quickly? Yeah. 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 It's next next Tuesday. So, does that mean in two weeks we go to South Carolina? No. No, it's oh, a little okay. further out than okay. that. February 8th, uh, we do the Silver State. Silver State. I don't want to say it because Pat will have to correct my (laughs) pronunciation of uh, Nevada. Uh, Nevada. Let's see. And then uh, February 24th. I shouldn't have printed. This one is so confusing here. Uh, Oh, so South Carolina is not third? I thought they were Uh third. No. No, Nevada's in between. Yeah, that's Oh, I thought it was. Oh, my bad. Then we're going to Michigan on February 27th. (laughs) And, ah! uh, yeah, uh-huh. we got quite. We got a little bit before. And then the Super, Super Tuesday. Tuesday. No, we got oh, Idaho. No? And, oh wow. Uh, Idaho and Missouri. Okay. Or Missouri. Uh, man, we got we got quite. There's a bit. no A in the word Missouri. We found common ground. Yeah. Thank no you. A. Yeah. No A in Missouri. But then then a whole bunch of states coming up on Super Tuesday, uh, which is uh, when is Texas? It's part of Super Tuesday. Oh, okay. That's uh, what I thought. Let's see. Yeah. Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, California. Is it going to be a race by then? Anybody think it's going to be a race by then? Oh, 100%. Uh, Rink, uh, Ryan Binkley's is... Ryan is, Binkley's on fire, man. He is man. on fire, man. Ryan Binkley. If you finish... This is just the beginning is, for Ryan. Yes. It's just the, the beginning. The momentum just started at Iowa. Yeah, Binkley momentum has uh, already started to I'm so roll ready down to the roll. track. I'm so ready to There's no to stopping it. it. No, there isn't. No I, stopping it's it now. So uphill from here. <laughs> I do like, though, that... Um, <laughs> Other got more votes than Chris Christie. I love that too, but at least Christie's out right, right, of right, the right, race. Yeah. Asa Hutchinson's in the race supposedly. Got beat by nobody. Yeah, by somebody I've never heard of. I mean, is he a is he a radio DJ or something in Iowa? Be we should ask. Uh, should ask Steve. Steve, Steve. Oh Steve yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send him an email. I'll send him an email. Let's yeah. see here. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Here's his. It's Wikipedia. just somebody who ran. I bet, um, like Chad did. He's a pastor. <clears throat> oh, and a businessman. He's and a, a pastor. Politician. Yeah. Okay, pastor, so he, businessman, politician. Yeah. All right. Oh, he co-founded uh, some company in Richardson, Texas. Really? That's close to us. Yeah. So. Huh. Uh, okay. Shame on us, huh? It's in the DFW Metroplex. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Well, here's Joy Reid on GOP voters last night. Uh, because... But, you know, I feel like the, the important sort of data point, and, and, you know, Steve talks about it a lot. He's, he's going to probably talk about it a little more Tell tonight. Us. Is that these, these are white Christians. <laughs> that this is a state that is over-represented, overrepresented by white Christians uh-huh. that are going to participate in these tonight. caucuses, yes. especially tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, I today, earlier yeah. today, reached out to Robert Jones, Robbie Jones, um, from the Public Religion Research Institute, okay. Did you? knowing that okay. we were going to talk about Iowa. And this is yeah. a hyper you know evangelical st- <laughs> white state. And he said the following to me. <laughs> okay. Iowa is about 61% white Christian. The country oh as a whole gosh, is approximately terrible. 41% right? white oh, Christian. Wow. And in Iowa, 
like we're talking about evangelical white Christians. And he said the yeah, following. Yeah, that's even worse. Because I asked I mean, him, they, what do they why get do we let him out live? of supporting Donald Trump? Because he mm. keeps losing, he keeps delivering losses and losses and losses. And he what? said the following. Wait, what? They see Pause themselves. Pause it for a second. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's accurate. Is it? Midterms? <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I get, I, Guess the last time was 2016, man. Uh, right, all right. I but guess. he keeps losing and losing, though. Uh, losing and losing. I mean, he's well, won quite a few races. Well, I, for people, I, I'm I'm putting a a, a really big mm. asterisk next to 2020. However, if we're going to talk about Trump losing streaks, in that it was part of his losing streak, it's or? part of the, it's uh, stolen from okay. him. Yeah. All right. So election I'm not denying. counting that on yeah. a losing streak for Donald Trump. So okay. you denying the election? Absolutely, hundred <laughs> wow. percent. It was stolen. Uh, yeah, you come. You at correct me. my Iowa spelling. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All, right. All right. We hear you, Joe Biden. <laughs> What's the rest of this clip? All right. Let's hear it. Difficult oh, as it may be. Because I asked him, nice what, hair, they, what do they get out yeah. of supporting yeah. Donald Trump? It's because he white, keeps though, losing, he racist. keeps delivering losses and losses and losses. And he said the following. Okay, what he said. They see themselves as the rightful inheritors of this country. And Trump has promised to give it yeah. back to them. Okay. All the things that we think about, about electability, about, you know, what are people gaming out or mm -hmm. none of that matters when you believe that God has given you this country, that it is yours and that everyone who is not a white conservative Christian oh, is a is a fraudulent American, oh my is a less, gosh. A, a, less a less real American. Oh, no, election alert. You don't care about yeah, electability. Please you interrupt care about her. What, God what an idiot. Yeah. What an idiot. So she can't say it's our country. She has to be separate and say, oh, it's their country. Yeah. Come on. Right. Can we not? Get, what? We can't even find common ground on being a, I know. a nation of Americans I anymore. Know. What white Christian believes that? This is my country and you don't belong here. You're not a legitimate American. Nobody believes that. What we believe is that our principles and our values have been taken away from us. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to get back. The Constitution is being ignored. That's what we need to return to, not don't return our country to us because it belongs to us. Let's return to our values and our founding principles. How about that? Can we do that? Uh, Christianity but, was certainly among our founding principles. And if you deny that, you're just a moron because they were. They were an absolute, absolute necessary part of it. Christian Judeo values were a major part of the founding of this country. And if you deny that, you just don't know the founding of the country. So, yeah, we'd like to return to that. Sorry. <laughs> I know, man, you're a radical. <laughs> I have a theory. Do you think that was the producer telling her to shut up because she crossed the line? Because if you look at it, she's still in the middle of the speech, yeah. and the voter alert still had 18 seconds left. Play that, Joe. <laughs> Play that. A is a fraudulent American, is a less, a less, a less real American. Maybe. Then you don't care about electability. Maybe some producers thinking, okay, she's getting... off on another racist rant. Mm -hmm. Jump in with, a, with an alert. 18 seconds early. That's possible. Early. Yeah. That's possible. Yeah, I like that. That's possible. Uh, all right, so... The thing was called really, really early. I mean, seriously, it might have been 7, 7.30. I, I, like, Steve Dace hadn't even voted yet, had he? Um, yeah, one of his producers, Aaron, said, I'm still in the meeting. Like, we, I haven't Still even in the meeting! I still haven't cast in my vote. Gosh. That's one his his producer tweeted at. And he one. probably got an alert. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Donald Trump has won the race. That's what, Wait, that's what, what? he did. He literally got the alert, and I, he quote tweeted it. was, I still haven't wow. voted yet. Wow. Yeah. It's wild. That's wrong, too. It's wrong because you talk about suppressing the rest of the vote. I mean, if you know it's over or even, you know, and especially if you're home or you're on your way to the meeting or you're in the middle of the meeting, how much how much fighting are you going to continue to do for your guy or woman when you know the race has already been called? Guy could have really suppressed the vote for DeSantis and, and even Haley. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, well, I mean. Quite possibly, uh, but I guess if you're already there, though, right? Yeah, I guess you're going to you're going to continue. But however, I, read I the know. opening chapter of the book: How <clears throat> Al Gore tried to steal the 2000 election, and there are plenty of anecdotes from the author uh, of people he talked to that lived in the Panhandle of Florida that uh, the polls still were open for an hour. 
Mm. Remember because the, the mm-hmm. media was like, "Oh, Al Gore won Florida," and yeah. and they never went to vote. Right. So yeah, many five hundred and thirty-seven votes in Florida yep. could have been a little bit more comfortable if they didn't depress the vote sure. in the panhandle for Bush. Uh, so it was seven thirty-three. Seven thirty-three central Central Time. Yep. Jeez, seven thirty. It started seven at seven yeah. Central Time, and at seven thirty-three, yeah, it's over. Yeah, it's over. Trump won by thirty points. What? Wait, what? <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. How do they yeah. have enough information by 733 to call that thing? Unreal. Well, uh, President Trump was glad they did, former President Trump. And uh, here's a little bit of, is this his acceptance speech? Well, yeah, this is when... Victory av- speech? Yeah, victory speech. Uh, I was looking for um, the speech this morning and was having trouble finding it. But boy, this is the only clip that's really going around. Okay. <laughs> Here he is. I want to thank you very much. I want to congratulate Ron and Nikki for having a, a good a good time together. We're all having a good time together. And uh, I think they both actually did very well. I really do. I think they both did very well. Really we don't does. even know what the outcome of second place is. And uh, I see <laughs> Carrie Lake. Congratulations, Carrie. Very good. I spotted her, I have to announce, because she's terrific. She's going to be a senator, a great senator, I predict, right? right. You're going to be a great senator. Mm. And uh, I also want to congratulate Vivek, because he did a hell of a job. He Mm. came from uh, zero, and he's uh, got a big percent, probably 8%, almost 8%, and that's an amazing job. They all did. They're all very smart, very smart people, very capable people. Hmm. Well, that all right? Uh, is that a little tip that it's not going to be Carrie Lake as the vice I'd president? say so, yeah. Because he's talking so. about her Senate. Yeah, hmm. yeah I definitely say so. She's going to get a Senate seat. She's not going to be vice president. I didn't think she would, though. I, you know, I think she overstepped her bounds when she was bugging him at Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> think he liked that. And the rumors <laughs> about her having a thing with him came out too. Yeah, so. yeah, he didn't think that. That probably didn't sit well with, uh, with his wife. So, I don't know. Um, so who does that leave? It leaves Vivek. It leaves Nikki Haley. Uh, I don't think there's any way it'd be Chris Christie. There's no way it would be Ron DeSantis. Uh, I think that bridge has been burned between the two of them. So I, I don't know. You got Haley or you got Vivek and it's probably Haley. Or hear me out. Yeah. Ryan Binkley. Binkley. Okay. All right. Well, that's assuming Ryan doesn't get the nomination. Oh, I'm though. sorry. I'm sorry. Trump, <laughs> I'm sorry, Trump supporters. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, so here's a here's a clip from Ron DeSantis, who I think was sort of happy because he beat Haley, and <laughs> that was probably the goal last night. Uh, here he is. They threw everything but the kitchen sink at us. We love you, too. They threw everything but the kitchen sink at us. They spent almost $50 million attacking us. No one's faced that much all the way just through Iowa. That's a fact. They, the media was against us. They Mm. were writing our obituary months ago. (laughs) They even called the election before people even got a chance to vote. (laughs) That is true. (laughs) But they were just so excited about the fact that they were predicting uh, that we wouldn't be able uh, to get our ticket punched here out of Iowa. But I can tell you, because of your support, in spite of all of that that they threw at us, everyone against us, we've got our ticket punched out of Iowa. And what I, what I learned by going around Iowa is that this country has a basic decency. We've got hardworking people, God-fearing people, patriotic people. You just don't see it every day because of all the nonsense that gets spewed out there by the media, by social media, all this other stuff. People want to have hope for this country's future. And that's what we represent. We represent a chance to reverse the madness that we've seen in this country, to reverse the decline of this country, and to give this country a new birth of freedom and a restoration of sanity. That's what we are going to do. 
So we have our marching orders. Our marching orders are to do all we can to preserve what George Washington called the sacred fire of liberty. The same fire that burned in Philadelphia in 1776 when our founding fathers signed the Declaration of Independence. The same sacred fire of liberty that burned at a cemetery in Gettysburg when our first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, pledged our nation to a new birth of freedom. The same sacred fire of liberty that was on the beaches of Normandy in 1944 when our band of brothers stormed those shores and helped free the world. The same sacred fire of liberty that was at the Berlin Wall in 1987 when Ronald Reagan stood there and said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. This is our responsibility to carry this torch and to preserve this sacred fire of liberty. Don't run away from this responsibility. We welcome this responsibility. We thank you for your effort. We thank you for your support. You helped us get a ticket punched out of the Hawkeye State. We have a lot of work to do, but I can tell you this, as the next president of the United States, I am going to get the job done for this country. I am not. I am not going to make any excuses. And I guarantee you this. I will not let you down. Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you so much. Mm. How is this not you. a closer race? Mm. Yeah. I just don't understand it. I really don't. I, I don't either. Um, How is it not closer? Why? Why? Is he not a viable alternative here? Well, he didn't wait his turn, Pat. Isn't that the <laughs> I, biggest argument? I guess so. That's the only one I hear. That, disloyal. That, yeah. Disloyal. disloyal. He didn't wait his turn. Look who's backing him. Um, now, if 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 Look who's you th- backing him, who's backing him? That's what I don't know. That's what you hear the criticisms oh, that geez. people like Jeb Bush like him and all that stuff. But if it, and I think we can all agree, even if you disagree on who should be the candidate for the Republican Party, can't we all agree that? I know we say this every four years, but oh my gosh, after living under what we're living under right now, mm-hmm. twenty twenty four is pretty important. When you mm-hmm. say, "Oh yeah," for the for the survival, yep. I mean, the very survival of this nation. Again, it's the most important election we've ever faced. So, if somebody has that same opinion of, as you, I'm talking mm-hmm. about Ron DeSantis, and mm-hmm. uh, maybe he doesn't see an opportunity to wait to 2028 because we may not even have a country to run for president in 2028. Yeah. So there's no time like the present. So the argument that he I didn't mean, wait for his turn it just doesn't hold so, water with me. He should have waited, mm-hmm. and then what happens if Donald Trump gets uh, convicted on charges, winds up in jail, uh, is taken off ballots? What's the alternative then? What are you going to do then? Who's who's going to be the Republican nominee? I mean, it's asinine. Somebody's got to be there as an alternative. I mean, did Trump, Trump did a good job as president of the United States. But he might not be afforded that opportunity. Right. I, I don't know. We should have maybe a backup plan here. Now, re- and it certainly can't be Nikki Haley. I, she okay. sucks. And that, that's what I was about to say, is remember that uh, concerning <clears throat> tweet. Again, it may or may not be accurate that we read yesterday. But so help me, if she drops out a week from tonight after New Hampshire. Could easily do that. I could see it happening. <laughs> and then, then we're going to be... Waiting, yeah. See what the next shoe is going to be to drop. But when we got Vivek uh, coming up here, we'll play his words in just a minute. Um, is this where he drops out? Yeah. Does he announce it? Yeah. Okay. So you don't have Vivek to kick around anymore. He's part of the Trump campaign now. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. He made that very clear. Yeah. VP, so, bro. VP. I'm sure he wants VP. Um, but I don't know that he gets it. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, ben Carson had some interesting things to say, too, about this, uh, about Who? Donald Trump. Ben Carson? Who? Yeah. Ben, oh, come on. Ben you, Carson. Uh, no, come, come on now. You know, the Ben Carson. <laughs> yeah. Who? What, what did he have? Oh, low energy, have, Ben. Uh, did he have any uh, primary victories? I can't even remember. Back I don't in, think so, uh, no. 2016? Wait, Pretty he sure ran not. for president? Yeah. Okay, get. <laughs> he ran for president. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll get to Vivek and what he had to say. Ben Carson, what he had to say, and much more coming up. Pat 
Matt Gray Unleashed. Keep forgetting I'm president. Some tweets here. Conservatarian lady. Let's remember Ted Cruz won Iowa and Trump won the presidency. Mm-hmm. Uh, giblets. Some would say Trump won bigly. <laughs> High Plains Stranger. Trump winning is worth it just to watch Maddow and her comrades in the state media lose their minds. Amateur monger of hate. So glad I went to bed early and did not watch the garbage coverage of Iowa caucus. Uh, Trisha Twist. I was a voter in Arizona, and they called the election before I voted. This happened for both Obama and Trump. That's so agonizing. Uh, Tom Jive Turkey. We're basically having a caucus for, for procedural reasons. We know who's winning the Republican primary. Yeah, looks pretty certain. Uh, subdued extrovert. I bet you can get Vivek now. His calendar might be freeing up a little bit. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and Stephen Robert, uh, VP Ben Carson. You know, speaking of uh, Vivek and Ben Carson, uh, we got some audio from both of them, some videos. Uh, Vivek spoke last night, and here's what he said. Now, this is a campaign founded on speaking the truth. Not just when it's easy, but when it's hard. Not just to the Democrats, but to our own side. And not just to other campaigns and candidacies, but to ours. And so I will stick to the truth tonight. The first hard truth, and this one's hard for me. I got to admit this. But we've looked at it every which way. And I think it is true that we did not achieve the surprise that we wanted to deliver tonight. And I think that that's just a hard fact that we're going to have to accept as a campaign. And the question then is, what do we do that is right for our country? And so Porv and I, we, we actually didn't make this contingency plan before everybody told us to. We said, no, we're not doing that. But we talked about it tonight. We took a little bit of time in our apartment in Des Moines before coming here to make some Hard choices. And I wanted to make a couple of announcements tonight to get the business out of the way. And then I want to tell you where we're going. As of this moment, we are going to suspend this presidential campaign. And this is going to have to be, there is no path for me to be the next president absent things that we don't want to see happen in this country. And I think that I am very worried for our country. I think we are skating on thin ice as a nation. We have done everything in our part to make and done every one of us in this room has done our part to save this country. And I am so proud of every one of you who have lifted us up. But we're a campaign founded on the truth. And so that's why we've made that decision today. And I'm also making the decision that this has to be an America first candidate in that White House. As I've said since the beginning, there are two America first candidates in this race. And earlier tonight, I called Donald Trump to tell him that I congratulate him on his victory. And now going forward, he will have my full endorsement for the presidency. And I think we're going to do the right thing for this country. And so I'm going to ask you to follow me in taking our America first movement to the next level. It did not begin in 2016. It began in 1776. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, there it is. So Vivek's out. <clears throat> he's uh, he's thrown his lot in with Donald Trump. Yeah, he made it clear. He wasn't just getting out. He's getting out and mm-hmm. supporting, supporting Trump. Trump. Yeah, <laughs> which makes sense. I mean, he's really supported Trump the whole time. I, honestly, I think this was set up for him to run interference on Ron DeSantis from the beginning. Could I be. think that was, and Could then I be. think he just Vivek got more and more popular mm-hmm. to the chagrin of Donald Trump. That's my take. Yeah, and maybe. and then he lashed out yeah. first chance he got over the weekend. Uh, also uh, speaking was uh, <clears throat> Ben Carson had some things to say about Donald Trump. Hmm. Well, you know, you, you you think about the Bible and uh, King David. Uh, 
<laughs> most of those people probably, if they were alive back in those days, would have said, oh, what a horrible guy. You know, the episode with Bathsheba and some of the other right. things that he did. Yeah, we know. And yet, he was a man after God's own heart. God uses different people for different times. You need somebody with a Manhattan business type of uh, personality to deal with the administrative state. You know, there are some uh, real wolves in that Manhattan business environment. Mm -hmm. And to succeed in that, uh, you don't just kind of be a flowery, nice person necessarily. No. That doesn't mean he can't be. I've seen him. Uh, when he's not being attacked, he's a wonderful person. Everybody, I think, would love him. Um, but just to be clear, uh, you're comparing him to King David? <laughs> just to be clear. Well, well, I, I, the volume is very to, low. You, you, oh, okay, I'm sorry. You are, just to put up for the record, you're comparing him to King David, and, and that worked out well for King David, and that <laughs> this is another King David, right? <laughs> I don't know about him, King. Uh, but uh, certainly he has some policies that are very worthwhile. And the other <laughs> okay. thing, Neil, that must uh, okay. be mentioned, mm -hmm. if the left is allowed to use the DOJ to, de to, to hurt him and to eliminate him from the process, right. then that's when we lose democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, Except we're not a wait, democracy. We so. okay. Don't, don't lose focus. <laughs> yeah. King David. King David. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you just compared Donald Trump to King David. Yeah, I remember when uh, Jesse Jackson made that same exact comparison for Bill Clinton during the Monica Lewinsky thing. Oh my gosh! And yeah, because I mean, obviously, we all know uh, King David had an issue or two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one adultery and uh, two murder. <laughs> so in that order. In the, yes, <laughs> yes. Up until that time, though. Yeah. I mean... He was a rising star. Yeah, he was something else. So, uh, uh, mm. spent a little time um, agonizing over those two decisions. And uh, interesting comparison. Yeah, and, and, and <clears throat> Ben Carson brings up a good point about how the left and the Biden administration have weaponized the Department of Justice. <clears throat> They've weaponized the election mm -hmm. process. Yeah. It, it, so it just puts a clip like Rachel Maddow saying that... There's one party, and it's the Republican Party that's leaning toward fascism in this country and dictatorial influences. Uh, mm. uh, it, please spare yeah. me. I mean, take a look at the Democrat Party sometime. The Marxism and the authoritarianism in the Democrat Party. You've got Joe Biden absolutely ignoring the Supreme Court right now. It's just, he was told, no, I'm sorry, you, you can't excuse people from these uh, student debt loans. And he keeps doing it. He did it for the third time this week. I mean, over and over and over. Yeah, we're just going to do it anyway. Whatever. I don't care what they said. We'll find a way to do it. Yeah, but if my guy does it. See, that's the problem. Yeah, right. Left and right. If my guy does it, then it's for the good. The common good. Right. Like, then better. it's just good. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, uh... Switching our focus to Joe Biden, uh, here's Joe on Iran. Yeah, this was just a few days four ago. Four days ago. Mm-hmm. Yep. I've already delivered the message to Iran. They know not to do anything. Okay. Exactly. Commander-in-Chief. Okay, I've already delivered the message to Iran. They know not to do anything. Oh. Did they do anything uh. yesterday? That <laughs> we could play a video to show huh. if they did anything? Let's, Let's take a look. Okay. Watch this. Jeez. Oh, God. Direct hit, right? Okay, so they attacked us in Iraq. Mm hmm. Uh, consulate there, so. Uh, mm, Jeez. But he told them not to do anything. And he's the commander in chief, so obviously, obviously they listened to that very carefully and decided to do something anyway. And oh. we've got four people dead mm. now, six injured. Ah, oh, jeez. Isn't there like a businessman, like a very wealthy businessman, also died? Him and his family. Mm. You're asking me, or you're jumping in? I'm to asking. Tell us? I, I don't know. Oh, okay, yeah. I think mm. I read it was a businessman, and him and his family are like wiped out. Oh, oh man, gosh, I didn't really know sad, that. really sad. Uh, let me take a minute to tell you uh, uh, about sleep being the foundation of our mental and physical health. Really important. When you're sleeping well, you can perform at your best, mentally and physically. And today, you get a special discount on Beam's Dream Powder 
which is their science-backed healthy hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar. Better sleep as n- has never tasted better before. Now available in delicious flavors like chocolate peanut butter, cinnamon cocoa, and sea salt caramel. All right. So great. With only 15 calories and zero grams of sugar, better sleep has never tasted better. Uh, other sleep aids can cause next day grogginess, but Dream contains a powerful, all-natural blend of reishi, magnesium, uh, L-theanine, melatonin. Oh, good stuff. Nano CBD to help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. Numbers don't lie. In a clinical study, 93% of participants reported Dream helped them get better sleep. So if you want to try Beam's best-selling Dream powder, get up to 40% off for a limited time when you go to shopbeam.com slash unleashed and use the code at checkout. That's shop, B-E-A-M, shopbeam.com slash unleashed and use the promo code for up to 40% off that gray is unleashed welcome Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Pat unleashed on Twitter. So, uh, Iran somehow, somehow, some way, seemed to ignore uh, a direct order from President Joe Biden. Interesting, because uh, he said, "I told them, I told them they better not do anything," and they did. After he gave them <clears throat> access to right billions of dollars, tons of cash. Jeez, and this is this is the liberal mindset, right? Yeah, they think, oh, we can buy off terrorists and then they'll leave us alone. Since when? Yeah, surprise! It didn't work. <sighs> so he headed to Philadelphia and uh, showed oh. his athleticism because the guy's still spry, yeah. eighty-one years old. Yes, but look at this. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> what was that? He didn't even commit to the fake jog. <laughs> Play that again. Uh, that is something else, man. He actually makes it up the stairs. I'm proud. I'm proud. As an American, I'm proud for the president of the United States. He's using the grab and pull mm-hmm. technique. Grab and pull. He does go up the the long staircase. Yeah. Stops oh. at the top. That's a big day for him. <gasps> I swear, every time he gets up there and turns around, it looks like he's like, where am I? Uh, and you, you're afraid he's going to fall flat on his face and tumble down the stairs again. Play the beginning of it. Look, oh, look what at is that. that. Yeah, right, he did the fake jog again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I'm going to run. No, I can't. <laughs> I want to see has he, when's the last time he walked hmm. from point A to point B without a fake jog? I don't think he ever does. I don't think it's possible for him yeah, not to do that. Mm-hmm. It's such a habit of that. He's trying to show us how spry he is. Uh, also in Philadelphia. Oh. Again, another uh, show of his All athleticism. Right. Guy's incredible. 81. <laughs> Look, there it is. Look, oh, oh, two two. Two. Twofer. Why? Why do you. <laughs> and do then, that? like a toddler, he goes, Look at my hat. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> one more time. Here it goes. Up oh, one. And up two. Weird. It's just so weird. There's absolutely nothing good or redeeming about this guy. Absolutely now, nothing. Now, now, here we go. Get ready for the comparisons because if okay. Trump does that, they're going to say, look, play it again. Trump's trying to get in front of the black woman. Huh. Look at that. That's yeah. exactly what they'd say. Yep. Uh, it's going to be a fun And they talk about how feeble he is because they do that anyway. <clears throat> I, like he said, 2016 the other day in a speech, he was talking about how good things were in 2016. Mm-hmm. When he meant 2017. Okay, that's a sign of his cognitive disorder now. But everything Biden does, you completely ignore. <sighs> so frustrating. <laughs> I know. He also talked to an 11-year-old girl uh, again. Is, just and, watch the man's eyes. I mean, <laughs> dude. <sighs> Want apples? I got some apples, little girl. Little girl, want an apple? How are you? Get in my van. How old are you? 
11. Oh. Come over here. Let me sniff you. Come right here. I got apples. Huh? You want an apple? How many old men are offering you apples this morning? Not. I'm not taking an apple from you, dude. That's his dentures about to fall sure. out? Something's up. Either that or he's got a big wad of gum. Something like that. Oh, man. Now I want to sing. <laughs> what a man, what a man, what a man, good man. Yes, he is. Uh, Kamala Harris was out uh, speaking as well. She's brilliant. Oh, yeah. And she showed it again yesterday. Here she is talking about Gen Z. I see our college students at the <laughs> <laughs> And let me just tell you, I love Gen Z. I don't know if you yeah. up in it. I love Gen Z. Hey, listen to her math. So, okay, for the older adults, okay. so this is going to be a humbling thing I'm about to share with All you. All right, humble me. If someone is 18 years old today, yeah. they were born in 2005. Oh, my oh. gosh, that's incredible. Oh, yeah, check that out. Think about uh, that for yeah, a minute. No, the math is impeccable there. I, wow. That's not, that's not wow. right. Wow. Uh, if somebody's 18, uh-huh. they were born 18 years ago? Yeah. When did that start? <laughs> so wouldn't that be 2006? <laughs> it would if it was early 2006. I mean, she yeah. made it sound like today. Yeah, she did. <laughs> I, I, whatever. So bad. <laughs> it's a bad day for you when my math is better than yours, Kamala. So bad. All right. Uh, all right. And then here she is on uh, MLK, because it was MLK Jr. Day yesterday. Today, we celebrate the Mm -hmm. legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Mm -hmm. a visionary who saw what could be Mm -hmm. unburdened by what had been. By what had been. Okay, there's that. That's her her favorite favorite phrase. phrase. She she worked it in on MLK Day. (sighs) Oh, jeez. Yeah, I, I maybe we play it later. Maybe we play it in overtime. Maybe we don't play it at all. But uh, we have that montage, you know, of all the four minutes worth of her using that phrase. Again, you oh make gosh. this point all the time. Do these people not realize they're being recorded? And when you say yeah. something someplace, it's going to show up <laughs> everywhere? Yeah. And you can't keep saying <sighs> the same old thing without sounding like a dumbass. I mean, I don't, I don't get why you keep doing it. You think... They're gonna love this. <laughs> we're, they're, they're gonna love this phrase. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? I, I hear where we we can go into the future. How <laughs> don't you phrase it again? Oh, oh. I don't know if I can. <laughs> unburdened by the past. Yeah, you see what essentially what is what can be uh, can be without unburdened the by what, what had what been. been. <laughs> uh, we'll give you the four minutes worth coming up here in a minute because oh, cool. yeah, it's worth it. it She's is really, really so good. good. And then the phrase will be burned into your mind. Pat Gray, unleashed. I eat no for breakfast. Pat Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Big win last night for Donald Trump in Iowa. 30 points. 30. Got the order of uh, the finish right. Everything except and everyone but uh, Ryan Binkley, of course. Mm. I don't know why I didn't see Ryan Binkley Snuck in on us. He sneaked right on in. (laughs) Got himself 0.7% of the vote. He finished fourth, did Ryan Binkley, just ahead of Asa Hutchinson. Wait. (laughs) It's incredible. No, he finished fifth. Oh, yeah, fifth. Yeah. No. Okay. Was it fifth? Yeah, it went Trump, DeSantis, Haley, Haley. Ramaswamy, Binkley. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, yes, fifth. Uh, so, so Asa was sixth. So as far as the uh, delegate uh, allocation, we have 20 going to Trump, eight for DeSantis, seven for Haley, three for Ramaswamy. Yeah, who's thrown his lot in with Trump already. Uh-huh. Dropped out and uh, joined the Trump campaign. So pretty interesting. Uh, Big night, though. Big night for Donald Trump. Uh, I think it was the largest percentage win in uh, Iowa caucus history. Got some tweets here. Uh, Frank Grape Nuts (laughs) tweets. That was Don Lemon's new name that you Uh gave him, right? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. There is a multitude of reasons as to why this race isn't close. The biggest one is the right wants to pursue what is not theirs, but God's alone. Vengeance. The godless right is equally problematic as the godless left. Yeah. The problem there being godless, of course. That is an issue. 
Uh, Carl Smith tweets, shocking. Who saw this coming? The Vake endorsing Donald Trump? <laughs> yeah, stunning. <laughs> Wasn't that the plan all along? Uh, Which, probably. by the way, Trump won 98 of 99 counties. Haley won the other one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Maskless in Florida. Trump will never pick any of his opponents for vice president. It will be either Christy Nome or Ben Carson. Nome is my choice. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, that would not be offensive at all to have Christy Nome as vice president of the United States. Holy smoke, 1776. The Iran that attacked a U.S. consulate isn't the same Iran that the Democrat Party bows to, released billions to, <laughs> and tells the American people that they're no threat to, right? No, actually, they surprisingly. Oh, the same place. Same place. The same arena. Yeah, okay. same same place. Gotcha. Jordan SP. Uh, Biden has to fake jog to make up for all the time lost from him walking so damn slow. <laughs> uh, it doesn't really speed him up, though. Is the thing, and I don't know if he thinks it does, but. So anyway, Kamala used that phrase again, the phrase she always uses, and just to point out how often it comes up. Here she is. I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been. Okay. You know? You what know? can you know. be mm-hmm. unburdened, be. unburdened by, by what by has been. Has what been. can be unburdened by what has been. Yeah. What can be unburdened yeah. by what has, has been. been. What can, can be, be unburdened, unburdened by, by what, what has, has been. been. What we can see, what we believe mm-hmm. can be unburdened by what has been. What can be <laughs> Unburdened by what has been. What can be? Wow. Yeah. Unburdened by what has been. What can be? Unburdened by what has been. What can be? Can be up with the right unburdened hand. Unburdened by what has been. Who Left we hand can down. be? Right hand up. Unburdened by who we have been. What Left can be? We have been. She messed it up. Unburdened by what has been. Uh, where we can be. Unburdened mm. by where we have been, and unburdened by where we are right now. What oh, can be? Mixed it up. Mm. Unburdened, unburdened by what, by has, been. what, what has, can be. Uh, yeah. Unburdened by what uh, has been. What okay. can be unburdened by incredible. what has been. It? What could be <laughs> unburdened by what had been. What oh, a little twist there. Can instead of could. Or could instead been. of can. What can be unburdened by what has been. What can be mm-hmm. unburdened by, by what, what has been. been. What can be unburdened by what has been. What can be. Yeah. Right, but will it be burdened? Oh, by what has been. Okay. Unburdened by what has been, believing in what can be. What can oh, be. Oh, she went backwards. Unburdened by what has been. What can be. Unburdened yeah. by what has been. What can be. Unburdened by what has been. What can be. Oh. Unburdened by what has been. What can be. Staggering. Unburdened by what has These been. What can be. Jaw dropping. Unburdened by what has been. What uh-huh. can be. Unburdened, unburdened by, by what, what has, has been. been. What could be. What could be. Could unburdened be. by what had been. What she can throws that be. in every once in a while. Unburdened by what has been. Has what can be. Too. What can be. Unburdened, unburdened by, by what has what been. Has what been. can be. Oh, double mask. Unburdened by what has been. I what can it. be. Unburdened by what has been. Yeah. What can be. What, mm-hmm. what, what un- should be. What should be. Unburdened. Oh, by what has been. What nice little twist. Unburdened by what has been. How'd you do that? Unburdened by what has been. See what can be unburdened by what has been. What can be unburdened by what has been. What can be can be unburdened by what has been. Unburdened by what has been and knowing what can be. Have a sense of vision about what can be unburdened by what has been. See what can be. Yeah. Yeah. Unburdened by what has been. What oh. can be. Oh, I didn't what see can that. unburdened what, by, by what has been. What can what be can unburdened be by, by what has, has been. been. What could be. What could be. Could be. Unburdened, unburdened by, by what, what has, has been. What can be. What can unburdened be. Unburdened by what has been. What uh, can uh-huh. be. My unburdened word. by what has been. Where we can be. Unburdened by where we have been. What oh, was possible. Where we've been. Unburdened by yeah, what has been. Oh, what's possible? Wow. Unburdened. By what has been. And she what points can over there, be? see? Yeah. Unburdened by, by what, what has been. been. I want you to look over there. Oh, bad hair. Unburdened day. by what has been. Yeah. What can be. Uh huh. Unburdened okay. by, by what, what has been. What can be. And down there. What can be. Unburdened by what has been. Unburdened by what has been. What can be. Unburdened by what has been. What can be. Unburdened by what has been. What can be. What can be. Unburdened. 
by what has been. Starts to sound like a really weird be. phrase after a while, doesn't it? <laughs> Unburdened. After a while. By what has been. There are those oh who gosh. are unable to see what can be. Right, yeah. Uh, um, unburdened. But there are many but, more right. who are able to see what, what can be the unburdened by what has been. The show's only two hours been. long. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so. Wow. I've been keeping a count over here. Oh. I, I now, again, I may have missed something here because. Yeah. Oh, it's easy. So I'm adding the MLK day one. Um, <clears throat> 25, 25, we got 64 different occasions. Jeez. This is within a couple. My so, gosh. 64 times this woman has used that phrase in that, speeches. That was documented. I mean, it could, it could easily be more than that. And it probably is. And what about the speeches where, you know, she's not recorded by anybody? There's a lot of those where you can't bring your cell phone. Oh yeah, yeah. And people hear about what can what can be up there, unburdened by what has been down there. Yeah, because what can be yes, or what could be <laughs> unburdened by what has been. She wants to be a weatherman <laughs> <laughs> up here, down there. Wow. By the way, um, that's our vice president. I want to apologize to you guys because I emailed time. Steve Days. Yeah. Hey, who is this Ryan Binkley guy? Okay. He says, I don't know. <laughs> oh, he doesn't even know? No. <laughs> He's on the <laughs> ground amazing. in Iowa. So, he was out there giving oh, wow. speeches for DeSantis. So as wow. I was uh, checking my emails, I want to mm-hmm. apologize. Uh, Ryan Binkley emailed me to be on the show. Oh, he did? Because he's a Dallas era pastor. Yeah. Oh, um, so I apologize that we could have had wow, the Ryan Bleak Hold on a second. When, so you just didn't see an email, or you just didn't bother to respond. I didn't or? bother to respond. Wow, we could have had. We could have had man. the you guy who it. finished fifth. Yes, in Iowa. In, in Iowa, seven hundred and seventy-four votes. Yes, probably six or seven times more than Asa Hutchinson yep. received. He emailed me on Friday, mm. letting me know, "Hey, mm. I'll be in. Uh, I'll be at the caucus on Monday, and I will have supporters speaking on my behalf." And he did. Apparently, and he did, and he got votes. So Good that's on me. I apologize for that not is on you. checking. Yeah. my email. Well, you know up. Kind of derelict in your duty, actually. 100%. You know, we should actually, as a show, we should make it uh, a point. Let, let, let's have the goal of getting uh, Ryan Binkley. Because, okay, right? So, so New Hampshire, have we already decided Trump's going to win New Hampshire, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, DeSantis isn't even trying there, right? Right. So, I guess our goal as a show should probably be to get Ryan Binkley ahead of Nikki Haley in New Hampshire. How do we do that in five <laughs> okay. days? We have a week. Do we give him a platform? Mm, potentially. Uh, You'd probably have to if you want him to be I don't know. Nikki if you, Haley. So, help me. If you're in New Hampshire, uh-huh. vote for Ryan Binkley. I don't know anything about the guy. I just want him doing better than Nikki Haley up there. <laughs> that would be so What is so the latest awesome. polling of New Hampshire, by the way? Uh, Trump leads, I think, by 20 or 30. Mm. Surprise! <laughs> Last I saw, I think it was like 48, 24, something in there, okay. in that range, with obviously Haley number two. Ramaswamy was even ahead of DeSantis. So it's Interesting to see where his votes go. Yeah, and Chris Christie was at 12. So that's going to go somewhere else, too. <laughs> oh, gosh. So the average spread for Trump is, in New Hampshire, yeah, okay. is um, forty nine point four. I think this is New Hampshire. This is weird. They've kind of lumped them all. Oh, here we go. Uh, New Hampshire average. Oh, only fourteen point two uh, as a spread there. Oh, uh, the wow. latest poll. He's up sixteen, and I'm trying to find out who's uh, placing second. Yeah. So Nikki Haley, Haley is the biggest threat, like you said. Yeah. Um, Ryan Hinkley. It's Ryan? What is his first name? Yeah, it's Ryan, Ryan. Binkley. Ryan. Yeah. Binkley. 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 Sorry. We got it. We got to. I'm telling you, we got to, we got to make a. Oh, that would be there. so great. <laughs> okay, so that's our new goal. It's to, it's to Ryan Binkley. Ryan, ahead of Ryan Binkley Nikki Haley. over Nikki Haley in New Hampshire. So, Ryan Binkley for number two. If you're Favake or that's even catchy. DeSantis, mm-hmm. just go mm-hmm. for Binkley in New Hampshire. Because, again, for DeSantis supporters, uh, he's already he's essentially conceded New Hampshire. He's not doing well there. He's not going to. He hasn't spent much time at all in New Hampshire. So uh, it might just be fun to vote vote for uh, Ryan Binkley, <laughs> <laughs> not at the expense of Trump, but certainly over 
over Nikki Haley. Yeah, and Please. this is weird. This poll is from last week, and in it, it's got uh, Trump 44, mm-hmm. Haley 28, Christie 12, DeSantis 7, Ramaswamy 4. Let, come on, Christy and Ramaswamy, at least if you, if you were committed to him and you're in New Hampshire, Binkley's your Go guy. with Ryan Binkley. I mean, we've needed a man like Ryan Binkley for What's your, okay. forever. So so what is it about Ryan Binkley that you really like? Oh, there's just so much, Keith. It's hard to, you know, it's like picking a favorite. Like if somebody came to me and said, pick your favorite child. Sure. I've got six. That I love them all equally. I got you. You I know, you. but but, but so, honestly, we're, we're trying to sell people in New mm-hmm, Hampshire on mm-hmm, voting for him. on Ryan Binkley. So, oh, so you know what? what I should something? let Ryan speak for Ryan. So maybe we'll have have Ryan on. And is that right? Yeah, he can uh, he can express himself better than I could for him. You know what I mean? Oh, look at this! I found I found a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, one of Binkley's top. Uh, oh, where did it go? I shouldn't have clicked it. One of Binkley's top foreign policy goals is preventing Iran from developing nuclear weapons capabilities. Okay, I like that. He's also called for the U.S. to protect its relationship with Israel and rely on diplomatic approaches yes. to end the war between Russia and Ukraine. Okay. Um, so far, so good for Ryan Binkley. Well, he has a seven-year plan to rescue the economy? I don't think we have seven years as a nation, much less that amount of time to save an economy. He wants a 2% cut across the board for non-defense discretionary spending. Oh, good luck with that. A push to reduce the country's budget. Good luck with that. And Oh, can we put up the GDP or whatever? What was that graph that I sent in showing uh, who's responsible for the the spending here? This is the effect of bipartisanship. Are you saying there's a lot of spending? So look at this. So hmm. so when the Republicans have uh, total power, yeah. um, they're responsible for 8% of our debt. Okay. Democrats, when they have total power in Congress, 12% of our debt. But 77% of our debt is bipartisan agreement on how to put this country in the red yeah. even more. Neither party cares about it. No. They, they just don't care about the debt. Couldn't care less. And that's why they keep doing the continuing resolution instead of... Passing a budget and sticking to it. They just won't. They won't. And nobody holds their feet to the fire, so they never will. <sighs> frustrating. It's just so frustrating, isn't it? Yes, sir. Oh, man. Blaze TV is debuting the second episode of our docuseries, Blaze Originals, where Glenn Beck traveled to the uh, quickly evolving Liberty County here in Texas to give you the real story of Colony Ridge. If you haven't heard of Colony Ridge, it's a really fast-growing, I mean extremely fast-growing, at a rate, in fact, of about 200 lots per week. And uh, it's mostly illegal aliens who don't don't speak any English. Uh, Glenn observed all of this and the team firsthand, um, and so you're going to see that on this documentary. Spoke with the developer, John Harris, and the developer stated there's, yeah, there's about 35,000 people living here. Mm, local officials contradicted that estimating the actual population more than double that. That's why if you're not already a subscriber of Blaze TV, subscribe now for 30 bucks off your annual subscription. Just go to blazeoriginals.com, use the promo code Colony Ridge. So, if you want to see this episode and future installments, please help support the work we're doing by visiting blazeoriginals.com today. Subscribe using the code Colony Ridge, you'll get $30 off your annual subscription. This is Pat Bray Unleashed. So how you doing with the polar vortex? It's going really well here. I already had my first pipe burst. Oh yesterday. no. Ah, Bro. Had a wa- waterfall coming down our ceiling. And, oh uh, no! Yeah, it flooded a little bit. Ugh. We fortunately we took the water key out and had it right by the door so we could go outside and yeah. turn off the water main. That's smart. Uh, you got to do that here because the pipes freeze every time. So uh, that was fun. Mm. Actually, got a place to come fix it within about an hour. Mm. Oh, to fix the pipe. Wow. So you're done. Yeah. It's all fixed. Well, now there's a hole in the ceiling, but uh, Where a tree other than once that, stood? it's all fixed. <laughs> there's a hole in 
the sky where Sailing the tree once was. Somebody's making yeah. money. And it's not me. <laughs> it's your plumber, it's right? Not, yep, it's my plumber. <laughs> <laughs> the people that are going to remediate dude. the damage. So you weren't able to uh, create like a nice little waterfall scene in your house? That might have been cool. That might have been cool. Uh, mm. Except no. 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 <laughs> No, it was not cool. Yeah, it's a battle every time it gets this oh, cold. It is. Yep. It sucks. I got heaters everywhere and cabinets open and attic. You gotta keep spaces. those pipes warm. Yeah. You really do. I uh, got a tub that is full of water. For what? It will not. Oh, it doesn't yeah. drain. You got the same issue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh really? Yeah. It's, it's like just frozen in there. Frozen in there. So you're supposed mm. to put uh, a handful of salt. Salt and water. Uh, hot water. Yeah, and yeah. hot water. It's not work. working. Nope. No? <laughs> Me neither, bro. And then today, <laughs> we also might have rolling blackouts, which makes it even better for the pipes. Because <laughs> if you That's don't right. have any heat going That's in your right. house, it oh. gets colder. It gets colder. Oh. <laughs> but I love the cold. I just hate what goes along with it. Yeah. It makes a real mess here in Texas because the way that, you know, they built, they built Dallas as if there's never cold here. And most of the time, there's not. But it's been once a year lately, right? Mm -hmm. At least once a year that we get this incredible cold snap because yeah. global warming. Right, it'd be 10 times a winter, uh, if not I for guess, that. or it just got so hot, it flipped around to the other side, and now it's cold. Uh -huh. Not exactly sure how it works. And can I just say that whenever you hear governments or talking heads call for the complete destruction of our I'm sorry, transformation of our economy to a more green... Um, uh, uh, <laughs> policy and and what is it? What is the uh, stupid um, the bill that they passed? Uh, mm. You know, just remember they are trying to set policy based on calculations that are a hundred years out. Mm -hmm. Could you concentrate on just like the overnight yeah. forecast? Because right. nobody said that right. snow in Dallas. They said sleet and freezing rain, very light, blah, blah, blah. And, and it snowed. Up, yeah, we got up to an inch and a half of snow. I realize you're listening in Minnesota. And you're going, okay, well, whatever. Uh, but here, they didn't. Mm. They couldn't even get the kind of precipitation right six hours out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Let's concentrate on just getting the weather forecast right, and then we'll talk about changing our economy. And speaking of snow, uh, here's what the Bills went through. Oh. Uh, yesterday they had that playoff game that they pushed from Sunday to Monday, yeah. and it was still you know, pretty <laughs> bad. Here's people trudging to their seats <laughs> at the stadium. <laughs> through what? Three feet of snow? Two and a yeah, half feet? I mean, look at that. They didn't Golly. clear. They, just, they said, hey, you can sit wherever you want to. No assigned seats. So if you paid a premium to be at that oh, game, you're pissed. And you're in the nosebleeds. Oh, should have gotten there earlier and just wow. sit in the cold. Longer. I mean, that's good for you know people who had right. crappy seats. But if you paid two thousand dollars for your seats, you're not going to be happy that it's ah come what may. Hey, everybody, sit where you want. Right. right. Wait, what? <laughs> That one is my favorite uh, one. He looks so cool. He was comfortable. He yeah, was. Play the family again, because I don't understand why they went through the aisle the long way, because they just ended up at the other end. Could they not? I think they wanted to sort of plow the snow well, how kind at the same time so they can get to the concession stand uh, <laughs> for something cold. <laughs> That's a cool on. dad right there. That That's a, a cool dad. dad. That a, is a cool dad. He's a pioneer. That is, yes. that is, that is uh -huh. the uh, modern equivalent to uh, the Oregon Trail of the 1800s yes. in America right there. <laughs> there we are, kids. Bills went on to win, by the way. Beat the Steelers. And uh, last night, the Eagles got crushed mm -hmm. by Tampa Bay, which probably makes Stu really happy. I'm sure he's thrilled about that. Yeah. Um, but my two teams won. Green Bay and Houston both on their way to the next round, so put that, that in your exciting? pipe and smoke it. So that means that uh, Moron Trivia was correct, right? Moron Trivia was correct. Yeah, which nice. game do we want to do this week? Uh, we've got uh, your Saturday games are Texans, Ravens, Packers, 49ers, and on Sunday you've got the Buccaneers and Lions, Chiefs and Bills. Let's do an AFC this time. You want uh, Houston, Baltimore, or Kansas sure. City, Buffalo? Let's do Houston, Baltimore, because that's okay. a tough one. You wouldn't, right. you wouldn't think Houston has a chance, because Baltimore is on such a roll. But we'll see what more on trivia has to say about it. Undefeated this year. Unbeaten. <laughs> you made a fortune if you bet, you know, using our metrics from uh, more on trivia, you made a fortune. And you're welcome. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. That came at no extra charge to you. Uh, D.C. U.S. Attorney Matthew Graves talking about uh, January 6th, because it's been three years now, but man, it's still fresh in our mind how... <laughs> 
democracy almost, almost died that day. It almost killed our great democracy. I was watching this documentary. Surprising, isn't it? I was watching another documentary that on Netflix mm-hmm. about the Greeks. Have you seen that yet? Because I know you probably a little bit behind me in your documentary let watching. Me, let me look it up. Yeah. No, I'm not. Okay. I haven't seen that one yet. All right. Well, it's it's kind of fun because, uh-huh. you know, they talk about how Greece really set the stage for modern civilization for, uh-huh. on everything. Okay. Culture, politics, democracy. <laughs> but during their democracy stuff, they... They also compare it to the United States, and we're not a democracy. We don't have the great uh, system that the Greeks came up with because we we have people we elect, and then they vote for us, and we don't have any say. And it and they went on and on and on about the splendor of democracy. Well, okay, it's just mob rule. Do you know that democracy is mob rule? The majority wins. You wouldn't have any of the gains that minorities have had over the years right. if we were a straight democracy. And then here they are disparaging our republic. Uh, it's agonizing. Mm-hmm. But, okay, here's, uh, here's the day our democracy almost died, according to D.C. U.S. Attorney yeah, Listen Graves. carefully to who they're and looking for. And what happened for. inside of the building? <laughs> An important note when it comes to our prosecutions about those who remained outside the building. Mm -hmm. We have used our prosecutorial discretion to primarily focus on those who entered the building or those who engaged in violent or corrupt conduct on Capitol grounds. But Uh, if a person knowingly entered the restricted area without authorization, they had already committed a federal crime. Uh And? Make no mistake, I'm thousands of people yeah. occupied an area uh-huh. that they were not authorized to be present in in the first place. In other place. words, if you're outside, we're coming after you, whether you were inside or outside. Right. And right. somebody very... People like Steve Baker. Sorry. Right. right. We're Some... going to prosecute you. Somebody astutely put this up there. Remember the guy who ran the uh, the U-Haul? Oh, into my the gosh. White House? Yeah. Yes. Um, no charges filed against him. But if you are roaming around uh. Capitol grounds on January 6th, they're coming for you. This country is insane. It's upside down. This is Pat Gray, Unleashed. Not a joke. Uh. Hey. Welcome. Pat Gray Unleashed. Got a nice uh, emailed invitation yesterday. Oh, wow. Says, hi, Pat. This is Jimmy Fallon's management. Oh. I hope this message finds you well. This is the management team of Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, you kind of said that already. We've we've been exploring potential podcast guests and wanted to reach out to you with a sincere interest in having you as a guest on our show to discuss your remarkable experiences and knowledge. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting. Uh, Our podcast is sponsored by Nike, and it's a platform where we bring together a diverse range of individuals, including public figures, musicians, artists, athletes, coaches, and many others. I fit into almost all those categories, of course, to share their insights and stories. It's an online event that resonates with a serious and engaged audience. Bet it does. And to top it off, not only is Jimmy Fallon's management inviting me on Jimmy Fallon's podcast, but for my participation... We're prepared to compensate you with $2,000 USD. So U.S. dollars. I'm not going to get these in Canadian dollars. No. you will be essentially that. worthless. Right. Or pesos. This is for each episode I do with him, I guess. Which And they typically last around 45 minutes. My unique perspective and experience would be a valuable addition to our discussions. Oh, wow. Better believe it. We genuinely hope you'll consider joining us as this is not only an opportunity to share your message, but also to promote your personal brand. Oh. I think that's true. Pat Gray brand. Now, for I, I'm i not sure what the scam is here, how these people benefit by it, because they didn't ask me, they didn't ask me for my social security number. I don't know what the deal is. Wait, maybe this is a genuine invitation. So you're going with a scam first? I, yeah. Be, well, no. First, I thought, wait, what? And then the two thousand dollars thing kind of threw me. I thought, okay, no. And the uh, what was the other? What's thing? What's the name of the podcast? A... Because I found one, but it doesn't fit the description of your talking. It about. doesn't. 
Yeah. What, is there a Fallon podcast? Yeah, but what is this one? Does it say what the title is? It doesn't is? say what the title is. Hmm. Um, so, so you're... But if I'm interested, we can provide you with the next steps or address any questions or concerns you may yeah, have. Yeah, they want to know how you can connect and stuff. Right. Thank you for your time and consideration. We eagerly await your response, and we're excited about the possibility of working oh. together. Regards, Jimmy Fallon's management. See, I would think if it really was Jimmy Fallon's management, it'd be like, Producer hi, this is Scott Brown from right. Jimmy Fallon's management. We'd like you on the podcast. Oh, I see. And they wouldn't offer me 2000 USD. They'd say, hey, uh, we do pay our guests $2,000 if you're interested. Right? Nobody says USD if you're actually from America. Huh. Well, maybe they did a diversity hire like you guys did with me. <laughs> and we want to make maybe. sure that, you it's know. It's a possibility, I suppose. But you get the information. Would you like me to the... follow up? So I'm you interested. guys have never gotten this scam? You've no. never gotten. Why Why is it automatically a scam? Thank you. <laughs> can you forward it to me so I can look in? I, maybe I can yeah. do some research here. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Um, I mean, it might be legit, bro. They provided two links. Uh, neither of which included the podcast, but uh, one oh, so was you did, Facebook. Hold on, it's a scam, and, and you clicked the links? I clicked the links. Oh. oh. You but it just fished. went to Jimmy Fallon stuff. So, okay. But now you have a bug in your computer. Probably. Right. And if you use it to... Ah, you're right. And I bet you, that's the scam. Yep. And if you use it to, <laughs> I don't know, it. check bank accounts, that's they can see it now. Uh, well, that's don't, okay, but I, I haven't stupid. seen this email. I don't know. You said it went to his... Social media sites. That, that, yeah. That doesn't, I mean, do they, did he, did he go to facebook.com slash Jimmy Fallon podcast management team, blah, blah, blah? Or did it go to uh, Zimbabwe.facebook.edu? No. EDU? No, it actually went to Jimmy Fallon stuff. And then it's not a, it's not a bug thing then or a uh, virus. If it went to a legit site. I think oh, you're. I think you. I think. I think. Have some, I have I just blown my opportunity to I be on the Jimmy Fallon? Somebody podcast. hurt you, and <laughs> you don't want to make the same mistake twice. <laughs> That's what I think. Is that what you think? Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you forward me the email yet? Not yet. I'd like to take a look. And, I'm looking uh, for the original here. Um, but th but that's weird, though, that it wasn't someone's name. The yes, USD is. is weird until you think, yes. you know, they're communicating with people in Britain and I guess. Canada or whatever. Yeah. Oh, you're not going to pay template. me 2,000 pounds? It's template, you know? Yeah. Okay. Maybe. But but it's strange, though, that there's not, like you said, like Joe Brown yes. phone number. Yes. Hey, that, to me, screamed phone? scam. Je nobody identifies themselves I mean, that is as Jimmy Fallon's management. Scam, and and it is you weird. would be the first it's person weird. that that I've heard of getting that really? email or that scam. All right, um, if that is a scam, but it, it might be, uh, huh. it might be uh, legit. Maybe, maybe I'll follow up with my questions and concerns. My concern is, I think this is a scam. Will you tell me if it is? <laughs> maybe I'll I'll email that to him. And of all the possible late night hosts that could have you on he's the most he's likely the only one that yeah. i could stomach for five minutes in a conversation True. yes with yes because while he's liberal uh he's less offensive than say oh kim elite's just oh my like, gosh oh my gosh see you could have just hit delete who cares if it's a scam if it was seth myers or jimmy kimmel or right most there's of no those. chance Stephen no, colbert wants you. to talk to you about the issues <laughs> delete does he <laughs> two grand <laughs> delete <laughs> not for 20 grand no Ugh. uh all right dc u.s attorney matthew gray yeah we just played that clip yep we did play him that's who we just played that said they're coming for you whether you were inside or outside of the capitol oh that's right yeah, yeah I, we're yeah, gonna yeah. do i think in overtime if you want there's like a a, a video that uh, the blaze team put together with steve baker mm -hmm. with the latest on j6 and oh my gosh i know this isn't a a, a shock to this audience yeah but uh, your government hates you oh they will lie about you oh yeah if they have an agenda if they have a, a narrative if you're in the way of that, they will take care of you, yeah. shove you off to the side. They don't care if they lie about you in the process. It's stunning, the, the clip that we have uh, from Steve Baker today. Okay. We'll get into that. Also, Steve Baker's got to turn himself in sometime. I think it's sometime this month. The, the government's not Late telling in the month? anything. Yeah. It's weird. Mm -hmm.
Well, let's just get this over with. At least let him know what he's up against. Mm-hmm. Oh, you ha- you have a teaser. From we do, the, uh, the Joe. Thing we, have we have a teaser. So, uh, proof of perjury. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is uh, mm. this is just a little little teaser of what we're going to play in overtime today. This is okay. Fascinating. Don rejected the defense's argument that members of the militia protected him. I don't conflate my story. He had two separate FBI interviews which were in conflict with one another. In the first FBI interview, he actually gave a favorable story about his encounter with the four oath key. And he stood in front of Harry Dunn for almost six minutes. After he was brought in for his second FBI interview, he Uh changed that story. He was fighting back insurrectionists across the Capitol while being called the vilest racist names. So what they did is they brought in another officer, special agent David Lazarus, to kind of bolster that story and give it more credibility by saying that when he arrived at the top of those stairs, that he saw Dunn standing at the top of the stairs being hassled by these Oath Keepers. Mm. At the time the Harry Dunn Oath Keepers encounter began, he was not in the same building. Interesting. Uh, there's so much to that. It's Interesting. Good. Good. By the way, I got an update on your uh, Jimmy Fallon yeah. scam or legit invite. Okay. Uh, one Jeff Fisher, who mm-hmm. will join us tomorrow, uh, can give you some more details, but he says it's definitely a scam. Yeah, I figured. He, nah, he has he has his own evidence of this that he will share well, with us tomorrow. If he was invited on Jimmy Fallon, you know it's oh, a, scam. a scam. Never mind. Scam. <laughs> I mean, all bets are off. Yes. It's a scam. So Nobody wants to hear his enlightened <laughs> mind. Actually, what I was going to say to you is he was invited. It's a bigger scam for him than you, I think. Uh, he was invited on Joe Rogan's podcast. Oh, was oh, he? Oh, wow. Uh, was it Joe Rogan's management? Yeah. Sure. yeah. He's going to give us all the details uh, okay. tomorrow. Can't wait. <laughs> Uh, All right. World leaders are meeting in Davos for the World Economic Forum this week. All right. They're set to discuss concerns about the potential for a future pandemic that could cause 20 times more fatalities than COVID-19. They're just, this is the, they're telegraphing what they're about to do. Just like they did last time. They did it last time. I believe that meeting, and I... I'm not sure if it was the World Economic Forum. Mm. Who was it? It was somebody else. But they had a meeting in September of 2019. Mm -hmm. The outbreak happened less than two months later. Started in China. Nobody paid attention to it at first. And then it was everywhere. Think about this. You just read it that they're concerned that it would be 20 (laughs) times more death. Yeah. They don't even have a virus yet. Yeah, they don't even know what it is. Or if it is. (laughs) Buckle up, y'all. It's known by the placeholder name of Disease X. Why do they call it that? Because they don't know if or when this has happened. They don't even know what would what would be the next pandemic. Wow. They just think there's going to be one. Of course. I mean, they're they more than think because they're preparing it right now mm-hmm. for they, release. Precisely. Uh, the term used to refer to planning a hypothetical future in international epidemic. Caused by a pathogen as yet unknown to cause human disease. Blah, blah, blah. In a session entitled Preparing for Disease X, a panel led by the WHO chief, Dr. Tedros Adnam Ghebreyesus. The most impossible name in news Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to pronounce. We'll talk about novel efforts needed to prepare healthcare systems for the multiple challenges ahead. Why? If we're to be ready for a much more deadly pandemic. What? How do you know it is? How Hold do you on. know that? Hold on. Check the calendar, y'all. Is it an election year? Is uh, this... I'm going to say yes. Oh, yeah. I'm okay. going to say yes, I, it is. I got a name for you, then. It's not uh, Disease X. It's uh, the election year flu 2 mm-hmm. is what this is. Okay. The WHO ranks Disease X as a priority disease in its awareness campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Alongside COVID-19, the Ebola virus, <sighs> Zika, uh, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. What? That's, that's that sounds one fun. Thing. Oh my gosh! That sounds fun. That's covering a lot of ground. The Crimean Congo oh hemorrhagic my. fever. Let's see what kind of symptoms we get. Middle East respiratory syndrome yeah. and severe acute respiratory syndrome. SARS. You want to hear about the Crimean Congo? Sure. Hemorrhagic fever. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, you get a fever, obviously. That should be self-explanatory. Muscle ache. Okay. Dizziness, neck pain, backache, headache, sore eyes, and 
Sounds like the flu. Photophobia, which is sensitivity to light. Oh, yeah. It seriously sounds like the flu. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you know what this is? This is the flu when you walk out of a movie theater. Okay. Because you got the yeah, sensitivity to Yeah, because then you're light. sensitive so, to light. So if you've ever been sick and walked out of a dark theater, uh huh, you've probably had Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. <laughs> I mean, can you come up with something a little bit more creative? No, they can't. I mean, look at how they name things. They just don't have a creative bone in their body. <laughs> it's it's incredible. So I, Davos is going to plan this for us this yeah, week. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Give us our marching orders. While all the billionaires are are in town, they can they can work on killing everybody. How are they uh, getting underneath to them? Davos though. Um private jets? No, that would hurt the environment. No, oh, they love that's the environment, right. and so they would never do such a thing. That's Pat. you're right. Try again. Exactly right. How are they getting there? Uh, they're going to walk. They're all walking to Davos. So I want to see George Soros <laughs> with his thumb out on a highway somewhere. Speaking of the elite, uh, the world could get its first trillionaire within a decade, they think. I thought we were keeping my finances on the down low. <laughs> No, nah, it's out now. Okay. It's out. It's too Who late. Is it? Who is it going to be? Somebody we never heard well, of? Well, they think it could be Elon Musk. Oh, wow, wow. Could be Bernard Arnault uh, and his family of luxury uh, companies, LVMH. Could be Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, Oracle founder Larry Ellison, or even Warren Buffett. What is he, 90? I don't think he's living to 100, is he? Maybe he is. I, I don't know. But all of those... Uh, Fortunes have expanded by 114% since 2020, and so... Has it kept up with inflation? <laughs> <laughs> He's 93. Ever so slightly. 93? Warren wow. Buffett. Wow. Um, you know, can you imagine when we have trillionaires, what kind of whining there's going to be about income inequality? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Uh -huh. Which, by the way, I've never understood why or how income inequality hurts anyone. Yesterday, when I first read this, I did a little calculating uh, on the income inequality between me and, say, Elon Musk, who's what, a $230 billion or whatever net worth. So I calculated, just estimating, his net worth is something like 46,000 times uh, more than my net worth. And how does that affect me? I... I don't feel affected by it at all. I continue to live my life, and do what I do, and live where I live, and uh, support my family. Uh, and, you know, he just keeps getting richer and richer and richer. And I just don't understand how that's affecting me at all. Except that he's employing people. And he has a forum that he can use because he bought one. <laughs> but does that hurt me at all? Does it hurt you, Keith, that Elon Musk is, you know, 46, 50, 60 times richer than you are? If I say yes, does he send me money? In fact, 60,000 times richer. No, I liked it better when it was... Is 50 40, or 60 times? 50 or 60 times. Yeah. Uh, 60,000 times richer than you are. Uh, well, see, I, I was fine when you said 50 or 60 <laughs> times. Now I'm pissed at him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm pissed. <laughs> right. It's just an issue of jealousy, right? It's just petty and stupid. Because what they want you to believe is the Marxist theory that wealth is from a pie chart. Okay? If Elon Musk takes a really big slice of the pie, we don't have very much left for the rest of us. We all have to divvy, divvy up. Well, that's not how capitalism works. Capitalism is an ocean of money where you back up your truck and you load it up with as much as you can and then you drive off. And there's still an ocean there left for other people to drive up and, and load into their trucks. Yeah, and if that doesn't do it, just petition the government to print more money yeah. until you get yours. <laughs> it's a good way to go, right? It's <laughs> asinine. I can't wait till there's a trillionaire because the weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth is going to be outrageous. I mean, the whining over billionaires now, we're, we're being told billionaires shouldn't even exist. They shouldn't be allowed to have a billion dollars. Doesn't matter whether they made their money legitimately or not. They shouldn't be allowed. Oh, okay. Well, then you shouldn't be allowed to work for them, I guess. Yeah. 
Yesterday we talked uh, about the uh, on oh, the airplane fund, right? Yeah, the diversity push. Oh yeah, with airplanes possibly compromising safety a bit. Well, the FAA is actively recruiting workers who suffer quote severe intellectual disabilities unquote. That's the psychiatric problems. And other mental and physical conditions under a diversity and inclusion hiring initiative uh, spelled out is. on the agency's website. Yes, the Federal Aviation Administration. So the dumber you are, I guess, mm-hmm. the better chance you have of <sighs> of working for the airline industry. And this is the Babylon Bee reporting this, right? No, this is uh, Fox News <laughs> reporting this. Targeted disabilities are those disabilities that the federal government, as a matter of policy, has identified for special emphasis in recruitment and hiring, according to the FAA website. Bizarro world. Okay, these include hearing, vision, missing extremities, partial paralysis, complete paralysis, epilepsy, severe intellectual disability, psychiatric disability, and dwarfism. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That's a big one. <laughs> like, if I don't have more dwarves in the tower. Wait, isn't that like a land bad word? Isn't it like little people? I the... thought it was like midget. You're not supposed to use it anymore. It's little people, right? It, it's little people. I know it's little people. I don't know which one you're not supposed to say. So, I, I don't know. I, and I, I'm kind of old school. So, you guys talk me down if, if I'm speaking out of turn here. But if mm-hmm. I'm in an airplane, right, that's coming in for a landing, <coughs> mm-hmm. I don't really want someone who has trouble seeing looking out on the horizon oh my guiding gosh. the are you wow. hearing this chris are you hearing the so heat was, and the so is this bad so my, you do my, know my there's like phobia. step yeah. stools and ladders uh-huh. that they can use wow i'm talking about blind people bro I don't, oh. I don't i don't need people that can't see well have you heard about sonar guiding. it's all about like <laughs> hearing <laughs> does so he know just... how this works does he know what we're doing here anyhow <laughs> I, I just look employ these people all you want right but maybe maybe we keep the certain disabilities away from safety uh yeah. issues. can can i get a disclaimer yeah. that says we're not going to do that yeah no you can't Gosh. no because they want to hire i think they want to hire blind pilots <laughs> not just blind but blind stupid pilots <laughs> Okay, the dumber right, you are, right? That's in there. The better it is. That's for the in FAA. there. You've got challenges. What was it? Like your your uh, mental status? Yeah. yeah. Serious that? mental deficiencies and intelligence deficiencies. Oh Severe my gosh. intellectual that, that, that. disability. So, so kiss your loved ones at the security checkpoint and just say, "Wow, honey, I hope you don't get a blind pilot today because I'd love to see you in a week." Nah, he's he can see. Uh, He's just really stupid. He's prone to outbursts. (laughs) He doesn't know how to turn on the plane. (laughs) So What was it like? (laughs) Like at 30,000 feet, he's going to just lose his mind. (laughs) But you'll be cool because DEI is is a good thing for society. It was a diversity hire, so you're going to love that. When we crash into the side of a mountain, Mm -hmm. you go, well, he had a disabled pilot, so that was cool. At least he tried. (laughs) He, she tried. (laughs) At least... Uh, they tried. Uh, they tried. Oh, are, we we aren't. Uh, it's I, nothing so amazing. Nothing makes like. How can you exist nothing. as a society no. when this is the focus of your federal government? <laughs> the FAA. Okay, there are safety issues here, uh, people. Some safety issues because the FAA oversees. I don't know aviation. So. <laughs> People are going to be flying in these planes that are being piloted by deaf, dumb, blind people (laughs) who are paralyzed. Fully paralyzed, because I feel like you read something about fully paralyzed. Yeah, well, complete. You can do, you can, they're looking for partial paralysis and complete paralysis. I'm just, as well as midgets or dwarfs, whatever. Or little people. Little people. People of not. Usual height. You talk about finding a unicorn. That's that's a good one. That's just incredible to me. Nobody's worried about safety here. No. When you're hiring stupid people on purpose, <laughs> on purpose. Yeah. The qualifications for this is you can't have any schooling. Okay. Did you go to school? Yeah. You're overqualified. Sorry. 
Bye bye. <laughs> so again, we want everybody to be able to find employment. Yes, we do. But, but there are but, certain things you're not you, qualified if for. If you dare suggest to the FAA that someone who can't see maybe shouldn't be in the tower, then all of a sudden mm-hmm. you're a hater. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm just looking through these uh, through these uh, job openings at the old FAA. Mm-hmm. Okay. You can be a supervisor okay. or aviation safety inspector. Yeah, all right. That'll work out well if you're uh, mentally loose. Oh, there. now see, Jeffy should be applying for these jobs. Try, uh, these are a, right up his alley. You want to air severely wanna... intellectually disabled <laughs> air traffic control specialist, Jeff Fisher. There you go. I mean, but is a he a midget? Ton no, of these. So he's not totally qualified. But... It's not. It's not. I mean, a lot of these jobs are air traffic control. Jeez, I, just one after Incredible. another. Incredible. Don't you need a certain level of intelligence to be? No, this is a government air job. traffic controller. The government oh, job. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you're no. right. So you're right. Is an air traffic controller one of the most stressful jobs yeah, it's supposed out to be there? Very, oh, it's very like good. That, stressful. They have yeah. like the highest suicide rates. It's good uh, that you have uh, someone stuff. mentally uh-huh. stable in there. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Well, they don't want you to be mentally stable, so uh, that that'll be good. That'll be good. Well, I'm so weird. Th- this, the, the, all the stories with flying and airplanes and diversity hires. I mean, makes me want to take a trip. Makes me want to fly somewhere. Right. Just throw a dart at a map and just take your chances. Yeah, it makes you feel really good about it. Wow. We have overtime coming up. Be back here again tomorrow. Hopefully, things will be a little bit warmer uh, wherever you are. We'll see you then. If the polar vortex doesn't kill us all in the meantime. This is Pat Gray, Unleashed. Going to the Gulf.